This is a great week for our city that um, Stanley's come down and he's going to do the Curliano Clarinet Concerto this weekend with the Louisiana Philharmonic. And so I thought we'd start off just by um, um, just jumping on this opportunity of talking to the man that this piece was written for. And the, the, first, the first thing out of my, my, uh, my mind is, how did it come about? Well, it sort of was an interesting, interesting story. The, uh, uh, the Philharmonic, the New York Philharmonic uh, was, wanted to commission uh, clarinet concerto. And uh, they, uh, their chairman uh, asked me who, who would I like to write a concerto for clarinet. And uh, after thinking about it for about a minute, I said Leonard Bernstein, <laughs> who uh, would have written a pretty good one, I think. The chairman said he would ask him, but he didn't. He, he was pretty sure he would be too busy to have it ready for the following season. But he did ask him, and uh, he said uh, exactly what the chairman had said that he couldn't he couldn't get it ready for the next season. But he recommended John Corleano as a as a young talent and somebody that could really uh, write a great piece. But he wanted to conduct it, so that's how it it started and. Uh, they scheduled the dates of the, for the first performance, uh, which was uh, December and uh, early December, and uh, it, was, it was to be five performances over a 10-day period, plus the rehearsals. And uh, I guess it must have been uh, a couple of months before the, the schedule uh, performance, uh, I got, I think I got uh, a movement of it, uh, the first movement. It was fearsome looking stuff, I'll tell you. A lot of notes. And uh, some time after that, maybe, I don't know, a month or something, the uh, second movement arrived. Because he couldn't find Corleano, he disappeared. He, he went somewhere to another city to, uh, uh, to, to write. He, he didn't want to be disturbed, I guess, by where is the piece, you know, and so forth. And uh, finally, the third, and the second movement was very different than the first. It was a uh, it was an elegy uh, uh, to his, the memory of his father, who was a great violinist and had, who had been concertmaster of the New York Philharmonic for many, many years. Anyway, he, uh, uh, I think it must have been mm, maybe a little over three weeks before the first rehearsal, the third movement arrived. And that was uh, just as scary. But, and so I guess I, uh, I just waded into it to try to, you know, get something out of the page and the, it, it, it was exciting time I must say so we played it though we played it the premiere and uh, the uh, the performance was recorded for, for broadcast and uh, subsequently it, it became part of a, a box set called historic broadcasts that the New York Philharmonic released and uh, it, it, it created quite a stir. The reviews were, were very positive and exciting, excited, you know. Uh, they, they loved the style of the piece. They thought it was a, a, very, a very big, big, serious work, uh, not, not a lighthearted uh, uh, fluff. Anyway, about uh, three years after that, uh, the concerto came back again uh, when, with Zubin Mehta, and uh, he, uh, we recorded it commercially, and uh, played it uh, in New York and on two tours, one to South America and one to Europe. So, so I got to play it a lot in those days. Now, around that time, I also uh, had the opportunity to play with other orchestras. I played it uh, and in, in multiple performances. I played it with the Toronto Symphony, with the Columbus Symphony, Kansas City Philharmonic, uh, the San Antonio Symphony, and one, perhaps another one that I forgotten about with different conductors and uh, the, the piece uh, sort of became a repertoire piece uh, after after that it, 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 people started uh, you know looking at it there were some college performances and they became then they they were uh, serious uh, you know uh, uh, performances of major orchestras and so forth and uh, I'm very happy to be back uh, playing this piece again because I like I said, it's been a long time, and uh, uh, it was it, it, the piece made a, a great impression at the time. I, 
and for the, the recording was Grammy nominated uh, uh, for my playing of it. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to, to be here in, in New Orleans to uh, try to try to bring this piece back again. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, I'll never <laughs> never forget what the music administrator of the Philharmonic at the time he, he said. He <laughs> He didn't. He said he expected a light piece, <laughs> and when this piece came, he, he, it was a you know major serious piece. He, it was like like uh, uh, the rite of spring for a solo instrument and orchestra. It, it uh, really taxed uh, the limits, uh, but uh, I'm happy to to be here to do it. <laughs> It's good having you here. Now, of course, you knew, you knew the composer from, I guess, from childhood on. Just and he about, certainly yeah. grew up yeah. listening to you play and listening to the Philharmonic. Right. And uh, he did write, you know, he, uh, he included every instrument in the orchestra, is what he told me at the time. Uh, uh, so he just used every percussion player. He used four trumpets, you know, he, he used uh, five French horns. Uh, but he didn't realize that uh, that we had four trombones. Finally, we only had three when his father was concertmaster. Hmm. So he, he didn't write a fourth trombone part. Now, did after after the premiere, did did you do any revisions or any work with him or anything to well, change it? Well, uh, I had to. Uh, he he came out with a with a published edition uh, that uh, you know that uh, because this was uh, of course handwritten. Uh, by a team of, of great copyists. Uh, originally, there were, you know, that was before you, you, you know, you put something into a computer, uh, and the notes would come out on paper. This, this had to be copied, uh, and uh, uh, the uh, so Shermer, I guess it's his publisher, uh, came out with a published edition of a piano reduction, a score, and so forth, and. Uh, uh, he said, "Would you look through the clarinet pot, see if there's any, you know, anything wrong here or there?" It was absolutely perfect, except for one wrong note. <laughs> well, I have to, I have to tell you all, it, it's, um, it's, it's going to be an amazing performance Saturday night. I know that we had our first rehearsal today with the orchestra, and it seemed like we were making mistakes, but mostly it was because we were dropping our jaws or just in awe of what was going on. <laughs> With, with Mr. Drucker playing, that, that it's such a fantastic piece that um, I hope you all will come hear us on Saturday night. I hope so. Would you like to hear some clarinet players? Love to. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs>